Hello again, uh, this is another lecture with Dr. Khalil Salem. I'm going to talk about, or let's say, explain in details how to uh, do the extraocular motility examination for patients. So, uh, in order to achieve that, it's very important, first of all, to sit in front of the patient at the same level. If she is, uh, for example, uh, above your level or below your level, you have to lower a little bit the um, chair so that both of you guys should be at the same level. It's very important also to take permission, be very courteous. You know, most of those patients are shy. Uh, they have, they might be having problems like squint. Their, um, let's say, self-esteem is low. Try always to enforce them, reinforce them. Try to be extremely gentle to them. These are really important tips that you have uh, to keep in mind so that you really, you know, this is, first of all, these are the uh, ethics and you really need to, for example, uh, grab a customer and, you know, do surgery for him. You have to be very, uh, you have to convince your patient that, okay, um, I'm the right person to do your surgery. Okay. So, بعد إذنك هلا بس بدنا ناخذ بدنا نعمل بدنا نفحص عيونك وبدي إياكي بس بتطلعي لي على رأس الألم طبعا حرك الألم بدي إياكي بس تتبعي القلم بعينك ما بدي إياكي تتحركي رأسك. This is a very important thing. You have to ask the patient to follow the an undazzling object. Okay. That means that you're not allowed to use a light source in front of the eye of the patient because it's going to be very painful. It's not nice. Okay. The other thing, um, try to use, um, for example, um, a pen or a toy uh, if uh, you are uh, dealing with a child. Uh, beautiful toys that you can use, those that, you know, comes with a happy meal, for example, Mac, they, they really love this stuff, okay? And, uh, you, you know, if, if, the, if the baby is less than a year, you can use your face as a target because they will never, uh, let's say, or they, they won't really follow you well. Uh, so you can just, you know, move your head right and left in order to uh, check the, uh, in order, to check the, the extraocular motility. Okay, so let's go back again to our patient. The first thing is that we're gonna examine the edge. Okay, the edge. This is a very important thing. Okay, very good. So that's the first part. Okay, here you are examining the medial rectus of the right eye, the lateral rectus of the left eye, and then you go up. Now you are examining the superior rectus of the right eye and the, sorry, infi, inferior oblique of the right eye and the superior rectus of the left eye. You go back, you go here, and now you are examining superior oblique of the right eye and the inferior rectus of the left eye. You go here, and you go up, you go down again, and then you go inside. Now you have completed your edge. This is called pursue eye movement, okay? This is one of the extraocular motility, uh, let's say, uh, movements that the patient has. There are other parts that we need to examine. The second part is convergence, okay? You ask the patient, Okay, you go inside, you go inside very slowly, you push, 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 until she tells you, you know, yes, I can see it as done. Usually patients with convergence insufficiency, um, those patients, they come with headache, uh, they don't know why, nobody is diagnosing them, they have 6-6 six, six vision, but usually after, you know, spending one hour or less on the computer, they start to have this really bad headache. Some of them, some of those patients have convergence insufficiency. Their medial rectus is unable to bring the, uh, the eyes together. And it's, this is a very, uh, let's say, easy maneuver in order to detect those, those patients. You don't need prisms, you don't need anything. You can just use your um, unandazzling object 
oratory and then just force it uh, towards them. Okay, uh, this is the second part. Now going to the uh, third part of the extraocular motility exam, which is the saccadic movement. This is the rapid eye movement. Okay, but I know no samahti. Command B, command I hold. Command four, تحت. And the hold. Command four, تحت. Okay. So the the rapid or saccadic movement is governed by the frontal eye field, which is a different part of the brain. Okay, the different part of the brain. If you consider, for example, the perso eye movement, which is a uh, more or less complex movement that uh, uh, uses the um, visual cortex as you know part of the process. Uh, this concludes the uh, your examination in uh, extraocular motility exam. But always your doctor will uh, tell you that you have missed something. So what do you think? What's that uh, thing that we missed? It's the pupillary exam, okay? Pupils are really crucial to be examined after exochromatic exam. Why? Because some nerve palsies, like a third nerve palsy, uh, in order to get a better understanding of the pathology of the uh, third nerve palsy, you need to do the pupillary reflex which we will be discussing in the uh, upcoming video. Thank you so much for your time.